third gear. <laughs> yeah, that's not good, guys. So you can see it's separated. All right, on the table here we have all of the components that we're going to be replacing. So of course we have our clutch. This is the sax replacement with the standard spring center. So we have our clutch, pressure plate. Over here we have some thrust washers. This, so this came from Pelican Parts along with these components here. So we have our alignment tool, rear main seal. We have a pilot bearing, miscellaneous hardware for the flywheel and pressure plate. This is the uh, clutch fork guide tube, I think they call it. And then I went ahead and got two bearings for the clutch fork itself. So that will be a nice little thing to do. This is just an inspection cover for the transaxle that I looked like I was missing. So these come from 944 online. So I went ahead and got a boot because I can tell there's fumes coming in from the car from the shifter area. So I'm gonna assume that the boot I have is either torn or it's just missing altogether. So I went ahead and just got one because it's, it was cheap enough. I also got a bushing for the actual shift lever itself. I know a lot of people reuse these, but I mean, it was like eight bucks, so I just went ahead and got one. I also have some hardware for the exhaust, so exhaust manifold gaskets and then just some grade eight hardware to go on there. And then over here from only 944, we have our short shifter kit. This is gonna be a really cool upgrade. We also have the upgraded uh, link rod basically and then this is more of a standard type replacement shifter but then it has their proprietary kind of bushing setup right there so that will be a nice upgrade now I was going to do this uh, with the transaxle in the car which is why I also ordered their shortened 11 millimeter wrench but we really don't need that because we're gonna have full access to it so that is everything we're planning on replacing. So now it's time to go ahead and get the car up on the lift after we get the Pantera down and get started. All right, we have our cars switched out. The Porsche is on the lift and we're ready to get started. Now, got some tools in hand. Step one is going to be to disconnect the battery and then we will work on a couple things up top here, namely our speed sensors, our speed reference sensors. We'll go ahead and get those things taken out and fish some stuff out from the top before moving down below. I'm not gonna go working too late tonight by myself on this, but we will get an early start tomorrow. Damn it, it's a 13 millimeter. I'm so used to working with 12 millimeter. Okay, well we basically have everything we need to done on top. So of course we started by disconnecting our battery and then I'm relocating some electronics. And then down there you can see there's a hole for one of these speed sensors. So that's where these things are. Just got those set up top. And then there's some hardware down there for a couple ground points. So those are actually exceptionally difficult because of that stupid hose right there. But we got it done. So now I'm going to move into the car and we will start working on the shifter mechanism. Well, the sunroof was an exceptionally good angle, but got the shifter out. No surprises here as far as what we're facing. You can see how worn that thing is. Pretty crazy. So, new shifter will take care of that. And then even on the shift rod, still got quite a bit of play. And the short shift kit will take care of that. So I see a lot of people, every time they do this job, they fight the foam, but I don't know, maybe my foam is just in better condition, but I didn't think it was too bad just to pull it out. You know, just kind of fish it out, and that way whenever we need to move the shift rod itself, we're not going to damage anything, so... Yeah, foam is out, no problem. 
So Eagle Eye viewers will know that I didn't have any kind of inner boot, which is no surprise because there's so many fumes that were coming from this way. Every time I'd shift, I mean, I could feel it driving down the road, like pulling air from the back and like hitting the back of my wrist. Just all just continuous, you know, catalytic converter fumes and exhaust fumes in the car from right here. All right, it is the next day. We made some progress last night. Notice down here we have a bunch of exhaust hardware. So this actually worked out better than I could have asked. So I was actually really excited for all of the hardware to break and only one of them didn't break and that's perfect because we were just using it to support the front half of the exhaust. So I had anticipated this and I'd already ordered new gaskets and hardware. So that worked out perfect. But we have the starter off, we have the slave cylinder pushed to the side. So we're kind of done up here for a little while. We will have to undo the oxygen sensor. Moving back here now is uh, where we're gonna turn our attention. So first order of business is to pull the exhaust off. Should be able to do that by myself. I don't think it'll be too heavy. And then we'll start pulling the CVs and We'll also have to take off the reverse light wiring there. And then we'll get up top and start working on the shift mechanism, which is way the heck up there. Gonna be a little bit of a tricky one to get to. But once we get that out, then we'll be in uh, good shape to pull the transaxle. Okay, that got a little sketch. The exhaust um, hung up on that rear hanger there. It didn't pop out of the other bolt like I thought it was going to. So I had to try to hoist it back up, but then the hardware was hard to get to, so that got a little sketch right there. I don't like that we just marked up the bumper. It is what it is though, but ah, it would've been a simple job. But uh, yeah, of course we had one little bolt hang up Whew, arm day. So just pulled the exhaust off, of course. And notice that I'm moving it. Hmm. There's new hardware at this joint right here. I'm wondering if somebody gutted the cat in this thing, and that's just catalytic converter remnants. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull that apart, stick the flashlight in there, and see for myself. All right, just undid this. Let's see what we got. So, it looks like there's at least one layer broken out. The rear layer for sure. Hmm, okay. see through the car. All right, next up, I'm going to undo the drive shaft coupling nut. So this is gonna go from the torque tube drive shaft to the input shaft on the transaxle. In previous video, I talked about how this thing was loose and not in exactly the correct position, so. Now we know it's where it needs to be. 
It'd be nice to pull this thing out. I'll have a, I'm gonna throw a tack weld on it because the rear clamp was allowed to actually move. You'll see what I mean later. Hello there. All right, so we can slide it a little bit. We'll take a pry bar, move it the rest of the way. Is this a scary shadow on my face, like telling a ghost story or something? Anyway, I'm gonna move rearward and we'll start working on the shift linkage as well as the reverse light wiring. Okay, we are under the car, obviously. And right up here, we have our shift linkage. So this is the actual shifter mechanism up top. And then up here, this is the nut we have to undo. So first I have to unclip the safety wire. We'll undo this nut, and then we can actually slide the shift rod forward. And then this component here, we're actually going to replace, and that's going to be the new short shifter setup. So we're gonna do a nice grease delete, and it'll be sweet. That rhymed. All right, well, we obviously just got the CV off and uh, looking at the wheel here. Holy shit. I had no idea that was bad. So we are going to get this side off the ground and see if it does the same thing. But uh, yeah, we got to fix that. All right, CVs are out. I'm ready to pull the transaxle here. So this lift just happens to have a rolling kind of like jacking point or something. I don't even know what you could really call it, but we're gonna use it for this right now. Got a motorcycle jack with a couple wood blocks. Should be able to have a lot of stability here as we lower this thing down. So I'm gonna support it right now. We'll get everything loose, start dropping it down, and it should be out pretty quick. That's the plan. Let's get started. It's not going to come all the way out, it just has to come back. Sounds like dry bearings. Mm -hmm. Well, I eventually need to replace all the bearings in this tube, so this will have to come out again eventually. But to get the torque tube out, <laughs> you have to uh, lower the hole. Um, the whole beam a little bit so the torque tube can drop down low enough to get past that. So it's a big job. <laughs> if only they just put a bolt, like a, like a flange here for this like little bell housing to bolt to, that wouldn't be an issue. But I'm no engineer. Oh, but you could be. Could have been a better one. Oh! If 
I look disheveled, it's for good reason. It took a while. Finally got the bell housing off. That thing was a pain in the ass. It way longer than expected, but we're here. Have the clutch pressure plate and the ring gear. So now it's time to go ahead and take this thing off. I'll show you guys exactly what is wrong with the clutch. But to go back to the bell housing, I'm gonna flip the mic around. I'll show you kind of what I feel like we we're fighting. So with the bell housing on the ground, this bolt right here was really kind of challenging to get to, but also it was exceptionally tight. So we had we struggled with that one. The rest of them really realistically weren't bad. Uh, one of the issues is our speed and reference sensor. So this thing goes on like that. And uh, I don't know, I feel like it was kind of holding us up along with a uh, heater core line that was just above the top right here, keeping it from going back far enough. So it's a big pain in the butt. Otherwise, I am going to do the mod here where we cut that to allow us to bolt this onto the uh, block, set our sensor height, and then put our bell housing on. I've already loosened these also. Finally have the clutch on the table here and I'll show you guys exactly what goes wrong with these things. So factory form, they have basically like a, a, a rubber coupling to absorb all the vibration and stuff and the harshness from the driveline. So at about 80,000 miles apparently it's very common for these things to break and that is no different than here. So you can see it's separated, allowing it to spin, this should be one piece. And the banging that you get is from this internal structure. Clanking metal to metal there. So that's that slack in the drive line is because of this clutch. That's just the factory kind of style. So to replace that, we have a spring centered clutch. And that, these springs here are what absorb that vibration and that harshness, that drive line shock. So we're gonna be replacing the pressure plate, the throw out bearing, of course. But before we do that, I do need to tap this ring off of here and then we will put that on the new unit and reassemble. So you can actually see a big old piece of rubber missing out of there. Yeah, she's no good. Junk. So beyond that, I've already pointed out I have a new rear main seal, ours is obviously leaking, new pressure plate bolts, new flywheel bolts. These are triple square and uh, the 
Torx that I was using actually worked perfect. I, I was surprised. So we also have our new pivot bearings for our shift fork, cup there, and a pilot bearing that we have to put in. All right, we're onto the car and it's time to try to get this pilot bearing out. And to do this, we're gonna use a little bit of science and bread. So we will take our bread and we will force it inside the pilot bearing itself. And then we will take a hammer and a bolt that I've sized here and we'll drive it out from the backside. Took a little bit of bread. Put it in the pilot bearing. Boom. One pilot bearing, driven out with bread. Yummy. You guys think I should eat it? So we'll get this cleaned up. We'll clean up the back side of the bell housing area here and go ahead and replace our uh, rear main seal and keep going. As you can see, I've already cleaned the entire back side of the engine here. It's looking pretty good. Now I want to go ahead and clean these holes out using compressed air. I have some ear protection and eye protection on. And then I will go ahead and pop the seal out and replace that. The reason I'm doing that before is because I don't want to force air in and past a new seal. So we're going to utilize the old seal while we have, have it. All right, next up is the pilot bearing. And for this, of course, got a big socket. Fits correctly. So there is a recess right here. So we drive this in until we feel it seat. You can hear the pitch change on that. All right, new bearing, new rear main seal. Everything's clean. We are ready for our flywheel. We're making headway. All right, it's time to get the flywheel on this thing. I actually found a, uh, a very nice gentleman locally who was able to resurface this thing 
and he did it for a, a great price too. So he had a really cool personal shop. I wish I could get some photos, but I didn't want to like invade on his privacy and stuff like that. But he had a very cool kind of private shop. He'd been doing it for 50 years. So it had a lot of like lawnmowers and tractors and stuff like that. But this was a, you know, simple job for him. So he got it knocked out in just a couple hours. But anyway, time to get these things on the car. There's a trophy there, brought that by today. All right, we have an alignment dowel right here. That's gonna correspond with the alignment pin or alignment dowel hole on the flywheel. Make sure we have this thing extra clean on the machine faces and then we'll clean this surface before we can put the clutch on. Get all these ran in, hand tight. go up to 66 and for this I'm gonna to have to actually figure out how to lock the flywheel in place so I will be back with you momentarily two very boring minutes later all right how about that for a holding tool so I just threw one of the uh, bell housing bolts in and then one of the actual pressure plate bolts so I don't think that's gonna move we're only going 66 foot-pounds on here so that should be perfectly fine all right, let's give this a whirl. Well, that worked perfect. Easy as that. All right, next up, we have to get this ring gear off of here. So we're gonna put this thing on the ground, rotate it just as you see. We'll apply heat to the ring using my map gas torch. And then I just have a couple drifts here. And just tap down around that as we heat it up, it should fall off. And then we will take that quickly. We will then go ahead and line up all the holes using the original hardware. And then that will sit down on there and as it cools, it'll kind of clamp onto it a little bit. So by the time we go to throw that on the car, everything will be aligned and it'll be good to go. That was awesome. That was really satisfying. I didn't think that was just gonna fall off. I was just getting ready to turn that thing off and start tapping, but bloop. So on the actual throw bearing clutch fork, I'm gonna replace these bearings here. So I've already pressed one out. To do that, just using my vise and a socket. Real easy.
All right, now we can clean this thing up and go ahead and get the other ones pressed in. we are ready to put the clutch on we have our new pilot bearing of course and then up here you see I have the speed sensors already mounted so once we get the clutch and the flywheel on this thing I can go ahead and set the gap on those and then we'll get our bell housing on so gonna make progress here pretty quick but I'm gonna grab a little bit of lubricant we'll put some on the pilot bearing itself a little bit on here and then of course where it's required on the shift fork and clutch. So I've cleaned the flywheel surface here and then we have also cleaned and blown out all of the actual bolt holes. So there shouldn't be any issue here. And then get our clutch on, good. This is simply just going to take a while. A lot of boring math later. All right. Perfect. All right, now we're ready to actually put the bell housing on the car. So you saw I just changed the uh, 
glide tube and that's for the throw out bearing to glide against. So another one of those while you're in here type things. And then I took a brass brush on my drill and cleaned out the pivot pin bores. So that should go in there no problem. And then the whole operation should go on way easier since we did the bell housing mod and cut that slot out of here. So we've already set our speed sensor height or our gap to the flywheel ring. So we set that at 0.8 millimeters and we're in good shape. Should be able to throw this thing on and uh, get this thing buttoned up pretty, hopefully, hopefully pretty quick. So another thing is you saw me go ahead and swap out the pivot pin bushings or pivot pin bearings in this thing. So just these are needle rollers and uh, pretty simple. Press them out on the, on the vise, press them back in. They glide nicely. Went ahead and cleaned this thing up. I did a, uh, I kind of polished the inside of that, that bore right there. Or not bore, but I polished the inside of that cup just to, uh, you know, make it so it doesn't squeak. It's nice and clean. So off to the car. Okay, we've got the engine pushed forward. So theoretically we should have more of a gap up top, which is where the thing gets tightest here. I really hate all this insulation around the engine. Just makes for such a mess. You get the idea. I'm gonna fight it until I win. One eternity later. just got this thing on and it's just it's this spot right up here it drives me crazy it's this one little tab that's off the back side I don't know to raise the engine from the front or push it up from the back it's a pain in the ass it's on there now anyway I'll go ahead and start a bolt keep keep moving All right, well, we have made some headway. You can see I've got the bell housing in. I went ahead and put the starter back on as well as the slave cylinder in there. So I didn't really show that because I was getting frustrated at that point. But I also went ahead and got the torque tube lined up. So we're slid in up front. We have most of our wiring complete. I also did the wiring up top, which is a complete pain in the butt. But now it's time to turn our attention to the rear and this general area that's missing a, a big old thing. So on the table we have our transaxle and now it is time to talk about shifters. You know so we have some other things to work on but uh, right now we're going to turn our attention to this area right here. So we're going to be replacing this and this with all new parts. So it's gonna be a little bit hard to see but there's a lot of you know, potential slack in the stock system with, you know, just these rubber bushings right here. So our link bar is going to be what kind of takes out all of that potential slack with the stock system. And then for our actual shift mechanism here, this new product is going to give us a slightly different ratio. And what is advertised is 30% less throw, which is not necessarily a big deal to me. I just want a good feeling shifter. So this is going to replace all of this and give it a nice crisp feel. But I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up. We will uh, get to work. All right, we're looking at the shifter here and it's probably not gonna be too noticeable on camera, but there's actually quite a bit of slack in this kind of nylon or plastic bushing here. So yet another reason we're gonna go to a short shifter setup. 
Now, since we're doing both of these at the same time, there's actually no need to undo this right here. So I'm just gonna undo the 10 millimeter here and the 17 back here, and we should be able to wiggle both of these off at the same time. Pushing a washer here. Whoa, things tight. So this little guy just has a point to it, and it will sit in a little drilled spot right there. All right, first up, we're gonna go ahead and put on our linkage rod. It's just gonna go right here. We will apply a little bit of Loctite, which they supply. I'm gonna use an 11 millimeter. And we shouldn't have to adjust this at all. They, they send it kind of already set up. Let's throw that on like that. All right, that is tight. We're ready to move to this side. All right, next up is our actual short shifter. Pretty obvious how it goes. We have the threaded hole for the jam nut. Shaft will run forward. Obviously our linkage arm will run up and that connects to here. So go ahead and get this thing on. Should slide on very easily. So for this again, we use some thread lock. Begin threading this in. And as you thread this in, you can feel it kind of lock into place. Like I can wiggle it less and less the tighter it goes. There you go. So we know it's in the right slot now. Okay. From here. Smooth washer, and we insert the linkage, and we do the star washer, another smooth washer, and then the supplied nut. Okay, we're going to leave this loose for now. I'm going to put the whole transaxle back in the car. We'll get our shift rod hooked up. We'll get the, the shifter in the car. And then once I have somebody in there, we'll go ahead and get the actual shifter in the neutral position and that's gonna determine where we need to lock this down at. So once we have the, the shifter in neutral, as I said, we'll lock this down and then we'll be good to go. But there's no other adjustments needed. Now, before I go ahead and put the transaxle in the car, I do need to repair this. So this is the coupling sleeve for the torque tube for the drive shafts. So right here, the actual uh, weld had broken, just the uh, tack weld to kind of keep this thing in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the TIG. I've already cleaned this area up. Just lock it back down like that. And then I will just refuse that weld. It doesn't need to be anything structural or anything like that. It's just holding these things in place. So yeah, go ahead and take care of that real quick and then we can work on getting the transaxle in.
know, my friend sent me a video last night of a guy just putting a beetle engine into his car by himself. Just put it up in there. So, can't complain. All right, next up on the list is the shifter itself. So I'm replacing, well, I'm replacing the entire shifter along with the plastic bushing. And we're just reusing the original mounting plate. So I went ahead and disassembled everything. I have this cleaned up and now we have to get this back together. So we'll put this in there. And then we have to press this inside here. It's gonna be a little bit of a tight fit that's supposed to be like that. So to do that, we're gonna use the vise and some brute force. So this part will be loose until we actually bolt it down to the torque tube and then we'll be good. So this bolt right here is actually the kind of proprietary part that uh, that this company does to get a better shifter feel. It's replacing, you know, obviously the worn out pin right here. You know, this sleeve on the shift the shift rod is going to be wore out too. So what they do is they give you a new pin and then a set of needle bearings. So there's two of them there, and then basically you can tighten this uh, nylon lock nut and just build the right amount of tension in on this. So that's a really cool thing to do. Now I can go back under the car and actually start reattaching stuff back there. All right, we're under the car looking at the shift linkage here. So on top, you can see that hole right there is for coupling the two shafts. So there's a tapered bolt that goes in there. And then this one actually has a hole in it for safety wire. So for this one, we're going to insert it. There is a divot, so to speak, on the new shifter shaft. So they'll sit in there, you'll tighten it down. We're gonna put a little blue Loctite on this, and then we're going to put some safety wire on here, which we don't wanna forget. And we'll wrap that around there, and then we'll put our boot back over it. So after we're done installing this bolt, I'll turn my attention to this right here. So this is the back end of the shifter. We left this loose because I'm gonna have my friend get in the car, set the shifter handle in neutral position, like in the center. 
and then I'll go ahead and tighten this down. That'll lock it down so the shifter doesn't make contact with either end or either side. So after that, I can also make an adjustment to the pad the shifter mechanism is bolted to on the torque tube. We can slot the whole thing front and back if we need to. So this is going to be a big step. All right, in the car we have the shifter in. I have the bushings greased up, the tension set. This is like light years ahead of where we were. This is incredible. So, get ready to put on my inner boot, which we never had originally, and then we'll put our shift boot back on and go drive this thing. This is in neutral, first gear. That's not good. Third gear. <laughs> yeah, that's not good guys. Several days later. <sighs> Alright, we're here with the car and it has been a solid week since I actually finished the clutch shop and you saw me actually try to start the car on which we discovered it wouldn't start. So, that caused a, uh, a, like a mental tailspin into just deep depression and stuff like that because I went through all of my work, could not figure out exactly what the car was doing or not doing, I should say. But through a bunch of diagnosis and electrical testing, I figured the issue out, and now we're gonna go drive this thing. I put up a previous video before this kind of talking about that diagnosis, and uh, yeah, it was a bit of a bugger. So uh, definitely check that out if you haven't seen it, but in short, what happened was a, an apparent break in the wire between one of the connectors under the hood that supplies power to the actual injectors themselves on one side of them there was a break so one side of the injectors had no power and the thing just it wouldn't run so my best guess is that doing one of the bell housing bolts up top i might have just pulled a wire and it broke it in that spot i don't know porsche things these uh 924s and 944s this is stuff that can happen i know Lindsay racing makes an actual um, injector harness kit where it eliminates all of the factory wiring there because these brakes do happen. They have the same thing for the speed and reference sensors, so definitely something I would consider in the future. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get in the car. We'll uh, go row through the gears. Let me tell you, it's nice. All right, so we're in the car, and this thing has been completely transformed. Just the feeling of the short shifter having this nice and tight is incredible. So, if you guys are familiar with these cars, you know that that shift linkage, that bushing there, is terrible. And the shift throw is definitely much improved. Now, I do feel like I could possibly take the shifter, maybe loosen that adjuster in the back, and rotate it maybe over a couple degrees, but it, it gets every gear just fine. It feels great. And then, of course, on-off the throttle, there's no big clunk because of the clutch. 
popping into the next gear and just enjoy this thing. It's it's a lot of fun. One big downside is the rear main seal, that new one we put in, it's leaking. Oh my no, God! No, God, please, no, no! Almost just as bad, and I've heat cycled this thing a few times, but unfortunately, it is no good. So that really sucks. Are we gonna fix it? I don't know. The front main seal in this thing is also just pouring oil out. And uh, I just don't know if it's worth it for me. I feel like I'd wanna pull the engine out to do all this. And to pull the engine, it's pretty complicated. I probably gotta pull the transaxle again. And it's just, you know, if I only plan to have, you know, have this engine in this car for a year, I don't know. I don't like oil spots on my floor, but I might be able to live with it to save myself some labor and some cost. I'm just surprised that to do a front main seal, you, know, you should invest in a couple tools for this thing. The uh, locking tools for the balance shafts. It's like 500 bucks to do like a really good kit with everything you need. I'm just like, ah, I don't feel like doing that. 